You're listening to the Music Educator Podcast with your host, Bill Stevens, the 21st Century Music Educator Man. Podcasting from beautiful Leesburg, Virginia. Welcome to the Music Educator Podcast, bringing you the latest tips, tricks, and practical advice you can use tomorrow. Here's your host and fellow music educator, Bill Stevens. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Music Educator Podcast. If you're returning, welcome back. And if this is your first time here, welcome to the podcast. We have a special treat for you in Season 4, Episode 12. We have our very first interview with Miss Anola Douglas, who's going to talk to us about presenting at a conference. How are you doing, Anola? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. All right, so Nola, can you tell us a little bit about your experience and what you do? Sure. So I am the choir director at Metz Middle School in Manassas City, uh, which is in Virginia. And I teach the 7th and 8th grade choirs. Uh, we are only a 7th and 8th grade school, so that's why I only do 7th and 8th grade. Uh, this is going to be my 16th year of teaching, which is just wild. I can't even believe that is coming out of my mouth. Well, but, that's like the halfway uh, point. Yeah, it's a, it's a long time. Uh, this is my fifth, sixth, maybe ooh, seventh, maybe year in Virginia. And before that, I was teaching in Maryland. That's where I'm from. And um, besides choir, I owned a private piano and voice studio for a couple of years. I took a little bit of a break uh, from teaching to do that. And then I just missed it so much. And I came back uh, with a vengeance. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, I love teaching middle school chorus. That's actually all I've ever done is middle school. Um, It's just, they're my people. I really love this age group. So yeah. And recently I have become very into, with the help of you, Bill, uh, very into instructional technology. Like, really big into it. I was really big into it before uh, the end of the year, uh, the whatever that was, 1920 uh, year, but then really got into it, obviously, over virtual. I know a lot of people, especially music teachers, kind of uh, saw it as, you know, this huge challenge, this hurdle that they just couldn't jump over, but I really saw it as a challenge in, in the way of something that I really knew that I could tackle. So that's kind of where I'm, where I've been going lately is instructional technology in the music classroom. Okay. And one of the neat things that we're kind of focusing on today is you, correct me if I'm wrong, you uh, presented at one of your first conferences. Is that correct? Yes, I did. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about what that experience was like and what you did to actually apply to present at a conference? Sure. So I uh, presented at the Virtual Virginia Blending Learning Conference, it's a mouthful, and uh, that was in April, and I don't even know how I I found out about it. Virtual Virginia, for those of you that don't know, is Virginia's online school. So if any student in the state of Virginia needs to take online classes for some reason, uh, they go through Virtual Virginia. That's the kind of one of the cool things about Virginia is that we do have that. So uh, Virtual Virginia in itself is its own institution, but also it provides development and things like that to uh, and resources to teachers across the state. So I'm not really sure how I found out about it, but I just really was into really, really deep into instructional technology at that point uh, because it was the middle of the school year when I applied. And I just said, you know what? Um, it's kind of nerve wracking to to have someone judge your ideas. Right. Uh, as music teachers, we really do know that. Um, but I just decided to go for it. And it was just a really simple form. Most of them are even some of the bigger conferences. And they just want to know what your title is. Of course, you have to come up with something catchy, you know, to get people interested. And then they want to know um, your basic like description. And some conferences want your outline as well. This one did not, but um, I in the in the future I have one because I know that a lot of them they do uh, kind of have that. 
But yeah, once I was accepted, um, my idea was accepted, it was really just kind of figuring out how can you present the information in an interesting way. You know, adults are very similar to our students in that they need to be engaged as well. So how do you present this thing that you could talk about forever and just get into this like crazy deep stuff? How do you present it in such a way that someone who has no idea what you're talking about can really take immediately take what you've said and apply it to what they're doing in their classroom? Interesting. That sounds exciting. And I'm sure there's a lot more people that would want to present at a professional conference if they felt comfortable and they kind of knew what was going on. Um, All right. Now, here's a question. What did you do to prepare once they agreed to have you as a presenter? What did you do to prepare for that conference? So I started with the outline. That's really the most important thing. And um, again, if you are going to be applying for any uh, conferences to present, just go ahead and start with that. That really made a huge difference for me um, to kind of narrow things down. So I started with an outline and the order that I thought it would, the information would settle well in people's brains, I guess. And then from there, I just kind of went through like what I am doing with my students, what works, what works really well, what do they like? And then I asked for some feedback. You know, I came to you and asked you like, what do you think about this? Um, asked some of my other teacher friends, like, what do you, you know, does this make sense? Is this something that you're doing in your classroom? If, you, if you're not, is this something that you would actually be interested in hearing about? Um, so I really tried to not just be like, me, 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 me. This is what I want to talk about. I tried to think about like what other people would actually want to hear. And then from there, I just took everything I already had and applied it. I didn't talk. It was really important to me to not talk about anything that I was not currently doing with my students that did not work because what would be the point? Good point. Yeah. Well, okay. So you've talked a little bit about the, the application process. You've talked a little bit about the preparation process now run through physically, like actually going to the airport. What was that like? So this conference was virtual. Um, so this was literally me on my computer, you know, presenting the information, which is actually really helpful. I didn't mention I uh, made my entire presentation in Canva. Um, you know how obsessed I am with Canva. And I think that everybody needs to get down with Canva. And it actually made it really easy to do it from the comfort of my own computer because everything was right there, right? You don't have to worry about like, you know, projectors and this, that, and the other. So I actually presented this conference, which was even more uh, convenient for me, from a beach house in Florida. I was going to the beach that right. weekend, and I set myself up in a laundry room, and I made a desk out of an ironing board, and I like stacked all these books up real high, and uh, it was it was actually really perfect, and you know got on the Wi-Fi or whatever, but it was just nice to. I know not all conferences will be virtual, but especially because of the topic that I am teaching, the virtual conference is kind of my preference. So I think that that might be like, you know, where I go from now on, either a virtual conference or a conference where I know that the people in the audience have computer or internet access or something like that. It's really a hands-on kind of thing. Okay. And, and that's kind of a little different too. I guess that was also spurned on because of COVID. Right. I think like we're going to see more of that though. I really do. Either, you know, conferences that are virtual or live conference, but there is a virtual component. There is a virtual option, something like that. I think we're going to see a lot more of that. Now uh, you're doing, definitely doing something that's very professionally development driven. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, you were in Florida, right? What type of extracurricular things did you do other than just present? What did you I, do for Anola? I went to the beach <laughs> in the <laughs> Gulf of Mexico. It was absolutely beautiful, um, which actually made the conference experience that much better, quite honestly, because, you know, the laundry room faced out to the water. So as I'm presenting these, to these people, 
Um, I'm staring at the beach as well. So it was just a nice kind of like Zen, uh, but also surreal, but also really cool uh, moment. And it just made the experience, you know, that much better. Obviously, you know, that was a special circumstance. But if you do have a conference that is in a destination, for sure, you know, you want to explore that area, really get into, you know, going to other people's. I've been to BMEA for many times and MMEA and, you know, going to other people's conferences and hanging out with people and meeting up with people and just really like immersing yourself in the conference experience, not just presenting and then going back to your room, you know? It just sounds fun, you know, taking the opportunity. Yeah. To encourage others to present, what are some of the other professional benefits of presenting? Um, I think that really the, the most important thing is the preparation stage. There's just so much learning and growth in that stage for yourself. Um, and reflection on what you are doing in your classroom and what you are doing well in your classroom as teachers, especially music teachers, we are judged very harshly. Uh, We are, you know, and also judging is part of what we do, right? And it's sometimes you focus so much on what can I do better? What can I fix? What can I, I'm not doing, you know, I'm not doing what I need to be doing, but it really gives you that reflection in time to be like, wow, this is something that's really cool. And that my kids are learning. They're enjoying. I am doing all this crazy stuff. When did I have time to make all this stuff? Like, it's just kind of a little bit of that reflection and the growth part of it for me is realizing how far I have come as an educator and it's pretty cool, but also learning. I mean, putting it together a 45 minute presentation is not something that a lot of people do. It is not the same as teaching a lesson by no means, totally different idea. There's some similarities, but overall it's a different idea. So, you know, learning how to make you know, a Canva presentation, learning how to make this nice, cohesive uh, agenda, learning how to put all these pieces into one place that it can just seamlessly flow. Of course, as teachers, you know, again, we're doing that, but doing it for children as opposed to doing it for adults, it's just a whole different experience. Plus, I mean, even though these are programs and things that I do all the time, by really thinking about how to present the information to other people, I learned even more about those programs and applications for, you know, for future use with my my own students. Awesome. So what are some of the key takeaways from the conference? To just do it. I, I, um, really wanted to do, I wanted to present for a lot of years and just always kind of stop myself from doing it. Even though I am very good at what I do, I often have imposter syndrome as like, I'm, maybe I'm not as good as I think I am, you know, that kind of thing. And I really just was like, no, I'm not going to do any of that, even though I am always doing that. I'm always helping my colleagues. I'm always, you know, presenting in different ways. So that was my key takeaway is just like just to do it. If You want to present at a conference. If you know that your topic is interesting, you know that it's something that people can learn. You know, it fits with the theme of the conference. Just just do it. Just do it. Key takeaway for me personally is how how far instructional technology has come, you know, and how beneficial it can be when used appropriately with students. And also just, it just, just solidified how much I knew or how, how good Canva is. It's just a fantastic program. You know how much I love Canva and I just will never stop talking about it. It like took my presentation, like, I I mean, it just, I took it to a whole nother level. You know what I mean? Like just, I love Canva. I love it. I wish that I could get paid by them. I would. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And what advice would you give someone wanting to present at one of these types of conferences? Uh, Start looking early for sure. Uh, A lot of these conferences, their deadlines for uh, presenters are not always, (sighs) 
like right out there in the information. It's kind of stuff that you have to dig for a little bit. So start thinking about what conferences you'd be interested in, you know, now here in the summer, what conferences you might be interested in presenting at, go to their websites. I actually just did that earlier today. Look at what their, you know, requirements are, when the deadlines are, keep all that information together. And then if you know, you know, I guess another recommendation as well would be, you really should be presenting on the same ideas, right? Same topics. Like it's easier for you and you are becoming an expert in what you're talking about and you really can teach people. You really can give them what you're, what you're trying to give them. If you're doing a bunch of different things every time, it really just doesn't, you're not going to be able to really fully give what you need to, to your, you know, your audience. Um, and with, with that, get your outline ready to go. Get your agenda ready to go. Have a, you know, bare bones uh, presentation already ready to go that you can just fill things in here and there, depending on, um, you know, what you're adding. And then again, just go for it. Just do it. Well, that's pretty amazing. Thank you for all the insights. And, you know, just kind of taking a step out of your comfort zone to do something like this. Now, for our listeners, how can they connect with you if they want to ask you a question or just kind of see what you're doing? Yeah. So, well, first of all, thank you. Thank you for having me. This was fun. Um, I have a website, which is also houses my blog, which is just anoladouglas.com. I have a Teachers Pay Teachers shop. You can find that in my website, but also if you just go to Teachers Pay Teachers and you search Anola Loves Chorus, that's my my name, my brand name. Um, I also have some links in there to blog, uh, you know, some of my blogs. If the you know whatever I posted product that's there uh, correlates with the blog post, I do put those in there. I try to help and better explain why I why I do what I do. Um, and also on Instagram, my handle is Anola Loves. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Again, thank you to Miss Anola Douglas. It was great having her check out her sites. If you're interested in being a guest on the Music Educator Podcast, check out the Music Educator Podcast.com. And at the top of the page, there's a link that will send a survey to you. Thank you again for joining me for another episode of the Music Educator Podcast. It is a true pleasure to share this craft with lovers of music and educators like you. If you found value in today's episode, please feel free to comment and rate us on the Music Educator Podcast app, Apple Podcasts, or any other podcast aggregator. Also, check us out on our blog at bambuzz.org or podcast website the music educator podcast.com or our TPT or boom card stores. Thank you again for joining us today. And I hope you join us next time. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you for listening to the music educator podcast for the latest tips, tricks, and practical advice you can use tomorrow. You can subscribe to our podcast on every podcast aggregator or download the music educator app for free in the Apple or Google play app stores. Furthermore, visit our blog at www.bandbuzz.org for additional music education resources. We will see you on the next episode of the Music Educator Podcast. And remember, music can change the world. Music can change the world.